Does retro gaming suck in 2022? That seems to be a question a lot of people are asking themselves, and recently I watched an RGT85, I think that's his channel's name, about why it sucks. And I feel like not all of his points were valid, and I really, I've been mowing this over for probably over a week, and I really want to talk about it. I'm going to link his video down below so that if you want to watch it just to have some reference for this video, it might make a little bit more sense. So retro gaming collecting back in the early 2000s versus what it is now, as far as I'm concerned, is no longer the same definition. Back in the early 2000s, you could walk into a pawn shop or a thrift store and pretty much find the games just laying around for a couple bucks a piece. However, back in the day, it was pretty normal for it to be Let's move on to the newest, hottest thing. For those who purchased something other than a Sega Genesis. Yeah, that's it. Our sincere condolences. What a waste. When you start with a Genesis, you can always add a Sega CD and new Genesis 32X. Everything else is cold and stiff. Burial or cremation? Burn it. Welcome to the next level. I mean, the hardware jumps from NES to Super Nintendo to Nintendo 64 and so on were so quick that nobody cared about the old stuff anymore. So it was easier to be a retro game collector because it wasn't cool and there wasn't things like the internet or YouTube. And so although it is all kind of one and the same, I feel like it's not fair to compare retro gaming collecting in 2022 to back then. Now we have the internet, now we have people interested, hidden gems, you know, we're all contributing factors to the problem and people who don't really want to identify that or at least admit that that's no longer the same thing, I feel like that's kind of naive. I mean, don't get me wrong, it like totally sucks ass that I can't buy a copy of Earthbound for 20 bucks. You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We have this awesome, you know, gaming community where you're no longer the weird kid that wanted to hang on to their old retro games. I mean, there's all of us around now, but that comes with a price. And ultimately, I think we need to start adjusting. You know, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I've been here since the beginning, the ground roots. Yeah, yeah so have I. That's probably the only reason I have this. It's hard to say that I would have made the adjustment to the new prices given that I don't have to because majority of my collection I've been collecting over a long period of time. Recently, when it comes to the more expensive games, my collecting has severely slowed down because of the prices, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. It's just the hunt is a lot slower and unfortunately I can no longer go to the Goodwill and find these amazing prices and that does suck, but there is some transitioning and growing up that we all have to do. You know, it'd be stupid of me not to say that YouTube didn't influence this. I mean, I didn't come into the game until way later on, and so I'd like to think that I'm not contributing to the problem, or maybe I am. I really don't care. I just wanted to be a part of the community. However, with people like Metal Jesus and the Game Chasers and them kind of, um, you know, just showing that it can be a lot of fun or you can gain a following, maybe that contributed. I'm not sure. I think ultimately all of these things were unavoidable. YouTube with the internet, I mean, it has morphed into what it is today and you can pretty much point your finger at anybody. And honestly, we're all the problem. The people buying it, the people selling it, the people on YouTube, it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, yeah, games are expensive and retro gaming in 2022 sucks, but honestly, I think it just depends on how you look at it. I look at it from the standpoint is I get to now have a bunch of people to make friends with that I never would have met back in the day. I never would have been able to talk to Jen from Retro Rivals. I never would have met Gaming Off The Grid. I mean, those things wouldn't have happened if the retro gaming collecting had changed the way that it did. So yeah, once again, it sucks. Can't buy these games for super cheap, but you know, you can adjust. Gaming Off The Grid, I think, made a video a long time ago talking about how, you know, you just have to adjust to the times and you just got to put in the work. 
You know, you can find games out there and try to flip or DVDs or find a different way to make the money to get the games. And if you're not interested in that, that's okay. One of the few, few points that he made that I agree with is the WADA problem. As far as I'm concerned, WADA can also kiss my ass because they did inflate the market artificially. I have no problems with people being sealed collectors or grading their games or making their money. That's okay. There's no issues with that. But WADA did artificially inflate the market to get investors to buy games. And there is an amazing video by Carl, I think it's like Jobs or something like that, which I will also link down below. If you haven't seen it, which I'd be very surprised if you were watching this and had not seen that, but it's in the description down below, really describing in detail why WADA is a piece of shit. One of the points that he made that really pissed me off was just get an emulator. I don't know about you, but I personally played a lot of these older games at nauseum, meaning that I have the muscle memory and the one second difference between a flat screen and a retro TV is enough to kill you over and over again. The first time I ever plugged in Super Mario World to a flat screen TV, I kept dying and I was like, what the hell is happening? Why am I dying? And then later on, I find out that there's like a screen load difference. So to me, it means everything to be able to play things on the original hardware on an old tube TV and an emulator is just not going to cut it. I don't have any issues with emulated games. I have used an emulator for games that I have never owned in the past. But to say that's like the end all be all solution, I think is a stupid statement. And ultimately guys, if collecting makes you happy, then who cares what anybody thinks? But one of the points I think he really missed, like why it didn't come up in conversation at all in terms of why retro gaming sucks or collecting in 2022 is the pandemic. He didn't say anything about that. The pandemic literally injected the market with steroids and made the prices just freaking skyrocketed. Everybody in the world had to be at home. They had to stay home. And so people were on the internet more. People had more free time. And so a lot of people were able to be like, hey, I remember playing that game and I've got time now. I want to go buy what XYZ and I'm going to play that now, or I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Those things happened and those things caused a major surge in prices. And why that wasn't brought up, I don't know. It's not like it didn't happen. Like everyone got free money and we decided if, you know, for the people who didn't necessarily need it, we're able to pump that right back into the market. That caused a huge influx and we're kind of still seeing the punishment of that where the prices are not really recovering. And so the pandemic is definitely one of those like artificial factors that if it would have never happened, I don't think the market would have been as bad as it is now. I mean, really in conclusion, think what you want. If it sucks, fine, don't do it, do something else. And if you love it, then great. Collect if you can, if you can afford it or try to find a side hustle if you have time. But ultimately, I mean, it, the gaming community itself is an amazing group of people. In his video, he was basically saying that the gaming retro community was a stupid thing. This is the this this is the community community because I think gaming community the, the game the retro gaming community that's the biggest load of bullshit in the world. Just stop that nonsense. That that is just unbelievable to me. Are you kidding me? Like there are so many people within the community that lift each other up that help talk about the hobby. They, like, they're a beautiful group of people. I've never personally met Pixel Game Squad, but they seem like a big contributing factor. And the people that have reached out to me to try to give me help, that's retro gaming community. I mean, I don't understand. When I talk to you guys in the comments or when you guys, you know, interact with other people, that is the community. We are a living, breathing unit of people who love the same thing. And for him to call it stupid, that's the one thing I would say I took offense to and that that statement is just absurd. The retro gaming community, I love you. Stick around. Don't listen to jackasses like him. I'll say I don't really know what the point of this video was. It was just something I was mowing over and ultimately I think I could record this 10 times and never be satisfied with it. So I'd really just like to start a conversation with you guys in the comments down below. What do you think about retro gaming in 2022? Is it stupid? Do you think things have just gone so outrageous that it's not even achievable anymore? What did you think about his statement about the retro gaming community? Um, 
But thank you all so much for giving me your time, and I hope that you find an amazing deal this week. Have a good time.